subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 11th of February. Quad Foreign Ministers meet resolves to work towards free, open Indo-Pacific. Activist highlights Pakistan Army's atrocities in Balochistan post attacks by insurgents. And Nepal's Pashupatinath Temple reopens weeks after COVID-19 shutdown. And now for all the details. The United States, Australia, Japan and India on Friday pledged to deepen cooperation to ensure the Indo-Pacific region was free from coercion, a thinly veiled swipe at China's growing economic and military expansion at the 4th Quad Foreign Ministers meeting in Melbourne. Foreign ministers of the informal grouping of the four countries vowed to work on humanitarian relief, terrorism, cyber and maritime security and global supply chain challenges. India's Foreign Minister S. Jay Shankar said the grouping will continue to support ASEAN partners in their efforts to uphold peace, stability and prosperity in the region. The United States, Australia, Japan and India pledged on Friday to deepen cooperation to ensure the Indo-Pacific region was free from coercion, a thinly veiled swipe at China's economic and military expansion. Foreign ministers of Quadrilateral Security Dialogue or Quad Group meeting in the Australian city of Melbourne also promised to increase cooperation on COVID-19, cyber threats and counter-terrorism. In a joint statement, they vowed to work on humanitarian relief, disaster assistance and the delivery of infrastructure to the region. They said the informal quad grouping was determined to deepen engagement with regional partners and increase their capacity to combat unregulated and illegal fishing. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar, Australian Foreign Minister Marie Spain, Japanese Foreign Minister Yoshimasa Hayashi and U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken also met Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison before their talks. After the ministerial meeting, Jay Shankar told a news conference that foreign ministers held productive discussions. We are building an agenda which seeks to further our shared vision of a free, open and inclusive Indo-Pacific. We are keen to work together to further peace and stability and economic prosperity in the Indo-Pacific through collective efforts which address contemporary issues. In this context, we will continue to support our ASEAN partners in their efforts to uphold peace, stability and prosperity in the region. The Quadrilateral Security Dialogue is a partnership of four nations, each of whom shares a commitment to openness, transparency and challenges coming out of the current global order. This is the first time Quad foreign ministers are meeting since the two Quad summits last year. India's paramilitary BSF, the Border Security Force, on Friday apprehended six Pakistani fishermen a day after seizing 11 boats during search operations along the India-Pakistan maritime border in western Gujarat state. Three groups of commandos were airdropped by the Indian Air Force after detecting the intrusion activity in an extremely marshy area in Bhuj that made the task challenging. The BSF said operations were still underway to find out possibility of presence of more intruders in the area. Hinting at a further increase in Pakistan's petroleum product prices in the coming days, Finance Minister Shokat Tareen has said that the government cannot keep fuel rates artificially low. The minister made the remark while referring to a hike in oil prices in the international market, categorically rejecting the idea of reducing petroleum prices. Amid an all-time high inflation in Pakistan, Finance Minister Shokat Tareen has said the Prime Minister Imran Khan-led government cannot keep prices of petroleum products artificially low, stressing that the global hike in rates will have to be passed on to the consumers at some point. 
The remarks come as the government had earlier announced that there will be no change in the prices of petroleum products until February 15. However, a raise in fuel prices was well expected under the International Monetary Fund conditions for a funding program. Locals have claimed amid frequent price hike and increasing taxes, the government has failed to provide any relief to the people. इसमें कोई शक नहीं है और इन्फ्लेशन भी बढ़ी है महंगाई बढ़ी है तो जो लोगों के ज़राए हैं आमदन के वो कम हुए हैं तो उस वजह से लोग जेनी तौर पर बहुत बड़े दबाव में हैं और तकलीफ में हैं गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से भी कोई इतनी बड़ी रिलीफ जो है वो वो सुबाई गवर्नमेंट हो या फीडल गवर्नमेंट हो वहाँ से कोई ऐसा रिलीफ पैकेज भी नहीं मिल रहा है Meanwhile, reports suggest the government has decided to further increase electricity tariff by Rs 2.8 per unit amid a power sector circular debt that has increased to record high of Rs 2,476 billion. The move has compounded the worries of consumers. Moving on, prominent Baloch activist Munir Bengal has raised concern over reports of enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings by Pakistan Army during clearance operations in Balochistan after recent attacks on security posts by Baloch insurgents. He blamed security forces have been instead targeting innocent civilians as revenge. President of Baloch Voice Association Munir Mengal has raised concern over reports of enforced disappearances, extrajudicial killings and abuse of rights by Pakistan Army and paramilitary frontier corps during clearance operations post the attacks on security posts by insurgents in Balochistan. Pakistan's military earlier this month claimed that at least 20 insurgents and 9 soldiers were killed in recent days during insurgent attacks on two military bases and subsequent military operations in Panjgur and Noski. Mengal claimed security forces have been instead targeting innocent civilians and intellectuals as revenge. And then as a revenge, what the Pakistani forces did, that uh, the Pakistani Air Force uh, uh, used her jets uh, for uh, indiscriminate firing on the valleys of Pakistan and the towns. So where uh, there is a state that is using her air force against her people. This is what we have seen in uh, Balochistan, in Panjgur and Noshki. Ethnic Baloch guerrillas have been fighting the government for decades, demanding a separate state and saying the Pakistan government unfairly exploits Balochistan's rich gas and mineral resources. Activists accuse that Pakistan army has been instead carrying so-called military operations in Balochistan, targeting indigenous people in the wake of China-Pakistan economic corridor. Thousands have been internally displaced because of armed conflicts and army operations over the years. The top UN envoy in Afghanistan, Deborah Alliance, met acting Foreign Minister Amir Khan Muttaqi and expressed concern over the missing Afghan women activist. The UN mission in Afghanistan said that the global outrage over the fate of missing Afghan women activists has been conveyed to the Taliban. The Taliban minister assured of efforts to resolve the issue. The United Nations Secretary General's Special Envoy to Afghanistan, Deborah Lyons, held a meeting with Acting Foreign Minister Amir Khan Muttaki over the fate of missing Afghan women activists in the country. The United Nations Assistance Mission in Afghanistan in a tweet this week said that Lyons and Muttaki held their meeting during which the Taliban minister assured of efforts to resolve the issue. His constructive approach is welcomed. UN continues to engage Taliban to support welfare and rights of all Afghans, it added. This came as the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres in a tweet also voiced concerns over the status of missing women. Earlier on Tuesday, the UN Human Rights Office called for the release of four women activists and their relatives in Afghanistan who were detained or abducted last month after protests over women's rights since the Taliban seized control. The OHCHR said there was no news about the whereabouts of the four women who it said reportedly took part in protest on women's rights on January 16. Liz Throssell, an OHCHR spokesperson, said it was unclear who had taken the women and noted Taliban officials had denied involvement. Fears for the safety of vocal opponents of the Taliban and prominent women have risen since the Islamist group took over the country in August as foreign forces withdrew.
Many civil society and women's rights activists fled the country. The Taliban says that they have an amnesty for any previous opponents and that they respect women's rights in line with Islamic law and customs, but many human rights advocates and foreign diplomats remain skeptical. The Hindu festival Shivaratri is one of the most prominent festivals dedicated to the Hindu deity Lord Shiva in Nepal. With few weeks left for Shivaratri, Nepal's iconic Pashupatinath temple reopened from Friday for devotees which was closed due to COVID-19 lockdown in the Himalayan nation. The Pashupatinath temple in capital Kathmandu is the biggest temple dedicated to Lord Shiva. With few weeks left for the arrival of Festival of Shivratri, dedicated to Hindu God of Destruction, Lord Shiva, the revered Pashupatina Temple in Nepal's capital Kathmandu from Friday opened its doors for devotees. Closed since January 18 in wake of the third wave of COVID-19 infection, the temple welcomed devotees adhering to safety protocols and permission from Kathmandu District Administration Office, DAO. The DAO stated that worship, meditation or prayer can be done in places like monasteries, temples, mosques and churches by observing public health standards. With the temple reopening after the third wave, devotees from far-flung areas of Nepal thronged the religious site from Friday morning. <laughs> अनि त्यतिखेर चाहिँ कोरोनाको कारणले दर्शन गर्न पाइएको थिएन यसपालि दर्शन गर्न पाउँदा आफैलाई धेरै भाग्यमानी पनि महसुस गरेको छु एकदमै खुसी पनि लागेको छ भित्र गएर राम्ररी दर्शन गर्न पाइयो म धेरै उत्साह छु दर्शन गर्ने मौका पाए मलाई धेरै राम्रो लाग्यो शिवरात्रि फेस्टिवल इज डेडिकेटेड टु लॉर्ड शिवा व्हिच फॉल्स ऑन द फोर्थ डे ऑफ द वेनिंग मून इन द मंथ ऑफ फल्गुन एज पर द हिंदू लूनर कैलेंडर दिस इयर शिवरात्रि विल बी ऑब्जर्वड ऑन मार्च 1 Shivratri symbolizes victory, honesty and forgiveness. Hindus believe that observation of the Mahashivratri brings peace and prosperity to one's life. Despite being denied the opportunity to attend school education just by the virtue of their gender, two women from India's Pune city are now teaching children in their locality and nearby slum areas. They credit their new fortunes to coming across a group of teacher volunteers who help them in advanced learning and spreading the gift of education. Meet Gulnar Irani and her cousin Rubab Irani who never experienced school life but are now teaching young children in the locality and nearby slum areas. Despite being denied the opportunity to get a formal education, Gulnar and Rubab from India's Pune city have been teaching little children for more than nine years. Going to school is a far-off thought for a majority of Muslim girls from conservative and poor backgrounds. However, despite many challenges, the cousins recently cleared their class 10 board exams through open schooling under the guidance of NGO Panna Communities. Many स्कूल तो कभी गई नहीं लेकिन क्योंकि हमारे जब ये में थे मैं छोटे थे तो हमारे मोहल्ले में बहुत कम बच्चे स्कूल जाते थे गिने चुने ज्यादा करके सिर्फ लड़के ही जाते थे लड़कियां नहीं जाते थे एजुकेशन की तो बहुत ज्यादा जरूरत है इस जमाने में उनको किसी ना किसी तरीके से हासिल करने भी चाहिए और ज्यादा करके मां-बाप का फर्ज है कि उनको पढ़ाए क्योंकि वो बच्चे तो छोटे होते हैं उनको थोड़ी समझ होती है कि Gulnar is now preparing to clear her class 12 standard exams and aspires to formally become a teacher. Their story is a perfect example of there is no age limit to learning. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Quad foreign ministers meet resolves to work towards free open Indo-Pacific. Activist highlights Pakistan Army's atrocities in Balochistan post-attacks by insurgents. And Nepal's Pashupatinath Temple reopens weeks after COVID-19 shutdown. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.